What is going on H2O Army, Justin from H2O Plants, and today I'm giving you guys a bit of an update on what we're doing down here in the basement, aka what I'm now calling the Aquarium Vault. So I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be trying to do this at least once a week we're going to be touching on different things in the aquarium vault and also throughout the rest of the house there's other several other tanks uh, if this is something that you like or something that you catches your eye while I'm showing everything and you want more in depth leave it in the comments below let me know what you want to see because I'll try and feature more of that particular item on say next week's video and we'll be trying to do this every week it's something that I'm going to test out and hopefully you guys like it and if you do hit that like button and if you're new here subscribe all that good stuff now let's get into the tank so this first tank here this is one of the major grow out tanks and as you can see here there are several different species here you got some hydro japan some pocosteam and hell fury or uh, aka called downoy you got staragani repens a big carpet of that over there let me just get the focus there okay uh you got some rotala hara you got a bunch of different plants pogo erectus up there in the back and then you got a bunch of moss lining the top here. We'll go into what the moss is doing in in this position maybe in a future video. If you guys want to know why I'm growing the moss like that, let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, so this particular tank is just a 40 breeder here. It's got uh, Fluval 2.0 lights. It's running CO2. It's got a bunch of good stuff going on for it. So most of the plants in this tank are relatively high tech or quote unquote high tech where they require CO2, a highlight, and a good nutrient level. But there are several plants in here that don't really require that. Tank right now, there are black neon tetras, some reticulated flying fox fishes, which you can see here. They're actually not really uh, flying foxes at all. They're a type of Siamensis algae eater. So oftentimes I get asked during the live streams, do I have any fish? And yes, I do actually. This is my 55 gallon right there is a glow light tetra. I also have several neon tetras, head and tail light tetras. I also have uh, a Bosmani rainbow in here, some killifish, some uh, Harley Quinn raspberries. I don't know if I said that. Some these guys, I don't know what they are. Some cherry barbs, some Siamese algae eaters. And I also have some auto sinkless catfish, which you just see chilling out there, just hanging out. And yeah, so this is my community tank. This is what got me into the hobby. This is what's kept me in the hobby. I love these guys. Uh, several of them came from my friend Jake that also works here. He had a leak, so we wound up taking all his fish in his t uh, from his tank that started leaking, and they are all now in here. Next up behind me is the 15 foot aquarium rack that's going to house 8 40 gallon breeders when it's all said and done. And basically what it is, it's a top tank that filters down to the bottom tank and then the bottom tank circulates water back up to the top tank. It acts similar to a sump type system but there is no sump uh, down in there. The only type of media that's actually down in this tank. What's going on in this tank is the bottom tank really only has some lava rock in here. And that may even come out because right now it's being a little difficult to plant things because it's so, it's so chunky I need actually finer lava rock. This is a holding tank for most Anubis you see here. This right now is just some dwarf sedge that I got from Rachel O'Leary. Shout outs to Rachel for hooking me up. Supposedly this is true dwarf sedge, different from the dwarf sedge that I, I, I own uh, or I sell on the website. Supposedly it gets really tiny but that's taller than the dwarf sedge I got so I don't know. Uh, maybe it's opposite day or maybe she's just trolling me. I'm getting rickrolled by Rachel. These are, uh, this is a holding tank down here, and then up top here will eventually be a grow out tank. Right now it is another holding tank, temporarily. This is going to be for the plant pack, and if you're not familiar with the plant pack, let me just say, you can go on h2oplants.com, search plant pack, actually it'll be right there on the landing page. It's a monthly subscription box. Um, if you guys are watching this on Saturday when I plan to release it, it's coming out the following Wednesday, or, or this coming Wednesday, so in four days from the time you're watching this. Uh, if you go to the website, you can plug in your email address under the product, 
to be notified when it goes live. It's going to be very limited quantities and basically it's a monthly subscription box and you're going to get a load of plants in a box every month to your doorstep. It's great to try and try out new plants. If you have multiple tanks, if you want to try variety, give it a go, take a look at it, plug in your email if you're interested, that way you get notified because it's very limited quantities. But this setup right here is going to house all those plants when they all come in. So up next is another 40 gallon breeder grow out and as many of you know I've been dealing with some sort of algae issues in a couple of the tanks the last couple months after moving. Those have been pretty much dealt with and what you're looking at now is actually a different type of algae. This is actually regular type of like hair algae that comes when your tank is imbalanced. And basically what it's from is either lack of nutrients because we weren't dosing this tank for about a week. It could be too much flow. It could also be not enough CO2 and my CO2 problems, or I've been having a lot of CO2 problems with all the tanks. And that's just because when you're splitting it to so many different tanks, CO2 is fluctuating between all the tanks and I'm working on upgrading it here this upcoming week. We will be installing a brand new CO2 system, so that may be in next week's video. I may demonstrate on how I'm going to split CO2 amongst all the tanks that are eventually going to be in here. So. I'm really not worried about this algae, it'll disappear in time. Also the moss that is growing on the ledges, that's similar to the other tank, and there is some green spot algae. That's going to disappear as well once we get everything balanced out. Also there is several plants that are growing up and out of this tank because there's so many different species in here, they're growing super fast. A lot of them have pretty much outgrow the tank. And what you're looking at right now, this is an AR Mini. Lila, it's a rarish type AR plant. You're also looking at some Crypt Flamingo there, that really bright pink. It's absolutely stunning. These are not going to be available for any time soon, but they are absolutely wonderful and these are completely converted pretty much. I have some more that I got from a tissue culture pack from Reefa Palooza, but tissue cultures take forever usually with this particular plant to regrow and you can look at them right here. You can see some new pink leaves coming in, but they're not quite the full grown yet they're starting to come in and you can see the, a lot of the older leaves there that are uh, melting away and some dwarf hair grass also is surrounding this so all in all uh, this is a nice grow out tank it is coming along tons of stems in here I actually have to move a lot of these out because there's actually too many in here so let's move on to the next tank Next up, you pretty much have some 40 gallon breeders that just hold the majority of the plants that we get from our nursery. This thing, this includes things like Crips, Sagittarius, Valsinarias, also some Dwarf Aquarium Lilies, some Red Tiger Lotus Anubis, Swords, all that good stuff that goes in these tanks. And really what happens is they come in, we let them transition a bit, a couple days to a couple weeks depending on the type of plant, and then they go out to you guys. And you can see these tanks are just loaded because we can't keep stuff in stock enough. So I like to have extras on hand just in case and this is where they sit in these two tanks. Pretty much the same setup as the other ones except on the other ones I have two lights and these I only have the one light. Next up is everybody's favorite goldfish, Lucky. Everybody uh, seems to <laughs> love him on both the streams and everywhere else they are wondering where Lucky is, what he's doing, and Lucky is just chilling in his 10 gallon tank. And while that is not ideal for a goldfish by any means, he is getting a 40 gallon breeder here very soon, all to himself. Well, maybe with one other goldfish. But he is enjoying this tank quite well. He is making a bit of a mess, especially out of the Anubis that didn't do too well in this tank, and that I actually equate to uh, the light that is not ideal. So his 40 gallon tank is going to be right there on that rack next to the W's. He's getting that tank. It's going to be absolutely awesome. We're going to put in two sets of filtration, some power heads to really make sure that it is clean for him. Um, right now he's a little bit of a messy eater, so that will be fixed in the next setup of so this tank. So this unfortunately is probably the worst part of the hobby. It's having a sick fish. For those of you that don't follow me on Instagram, a couple weeks ago, I posted a video of a electric blue ram that had a tiny little dot on his forehead, and I was like, well, what is this? And it turns out it looked like it was a hole-in-the-head disease, which I'm not too familiar with hole-in-the-head disease. This is my first time treating it and experiencing it. Basically, it's just a, it's like a flesh-eating fungus or bacteria. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Basically, eating his skin, 
Um, I treated for it with using uh, Metroplex, actually this right here. Um, I didn't, well I started seeing results, but then I started seeing white fungusy stuff coming on. So I started treating it with API Fungus Cure, which is this stuff right here. Um, that didn't do anything, the hole got worse, so then I started treating back with Metroplex, but then I also saw him rapidly breathing and his, uh, his fins starting to deteriorate, and he was breathing so heavily, so then I started treating with this stuff, which, this is a great ick medication and other parasite medications, not sponsored, but Herb Tana, um, by Microlife, right, or Microbia Life, or Lift. Uh, this stuff is great, all natural, doesn't harm plants, doesn't harm a shrimp or anything like that. Um, and that treats most parasites pretty good. So I treated him with that along with another dose of Metroplex. Unfortunately, he's dead. So here he is, Gordon Ramsay II, as I'd like to call him. I named my first one Gordon Ramsay after Chef Ramsay, of course. And I absolutely love this fish. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. He came from Jake, the guy that works here with me, help, uh, that helps pack a lot of your plants. And uh, shortly after getting him in the new uh, in his new tank, he developed some sort of disease. Unfortunately, this is just what's happened with all the electric blue rims I've had. It may not be um, the species as as much as it is my fault. Uh, it just they never seem to work out. They only live a couple months with me, and then they seem to die. So I'm gonna figure out why this happened before I get another one. But they are such beautiful fish. I wish that I still had him as well as the other ones plus he was huge compared to the other ones that i had so it's such a shame to see such a beautiful fish pass on next up is margaret's son's beta this is captain america he has a small i believe this is three to five gallon tank from marineland that we set up a couple months ago and it needs a major overhaul which we will touch in a future video but this is his tank for now and then let's show you the next one. This is the most beautiful tank I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I don't just say that because I own it. I actually got this, if you're not familiar with, at Reefapalooza from my good friend Kevin Kelly at Brooklyn Hardscapes. He had built this for the aquascaping competition and literally it is just amazing. This is lacking though major plants. I haven't planted the inside, there's nothing inside the tank other than the rock stru structure and the only plants that is on the rocks right now are the moss that he originally put on there along with some pothos that I just added. In the future we will be adding tons of things to this tank and I'd love to know what you would recommend to put on this both outside and inside the tank. What do you think would look good? So next up are some planted vases that Margaret enjoys and likes and that's the whole reason why we have them. This particular one has a bunch of algae growing in it and that's just because we removed a lot of the plants before the water was crystal clear. So then we decided to remove some of the plants. This tank uh, also needs a little help which will be in the future and this tank is just absolutely horrible right now. In the future we will be redoing these and making them look a bit nicer but I wanted to show them on camera. In this particular tank we have two Endler uh, guppies or whatever you want to call them and their live bears Margaret absolutely fell in love with them because they're very colorful and then in the other one we have neon tetras but these are going to be a future project like I said so stay tuned for that and let me know if you want to see more planted bees so guys thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed it like I said in the beginning smash that like button join the H2O army subscribe we're H2O army we are strong As a matter of fact I'd love it if we could get to a hundred likes that would be awesome if we could do that perfect uh, also leave me a comment specifically outlining uh, what you do with your fish when they die. I particularly like to bury them in our flower garden. I think it's a way for them to be reborn. And this way I know you made it to this uh, part of the video. And I'll be choosing one lucky person from the comments on next week's episode to win $20 to the store. And you can spend it however you want. So guys, I will see you next week.